Hi everyone and welcome back to our crafting system series. In this episode we're going to set up our crafting menu UI. Previously we've got it so we can toggle a UI onto the screen but we need to actually set up the actual contents of this UI so we can actually see what we're picking up and what we don't. So the UI comprises of three parts. We're going to go into our UI folder and set up these three parts. We've got the crafting menu which is the main container for all of it. Then we're going to have the individual category sections and then we're going to have the slots inside those categories. So let's set up these three different widgets. So right click, create a new widget blueprint. And this one's going to be called the um, inventory category. Sorry, category. And I'm going to create another one called inventory slot. So let's start off with the slot. The slot's quite simple. We're going to get rid of the canvas panel. And in here, we're going to set up a size box. And the size box, we're going to put in a minimum and, and, uh, minimum and maximum, um, not minimum and maximum, the width overrides and height overrides, sorry, of our slot. So here, I'm going to do 128 by 128. And I'm going to drag a border into this. And then I'll drag an image into it as well. I'm going to change this to uh, desired from fill screen so we can see what the portions look like. The border, we're going to change the color of. So on brush color, we're going to leave that as a darker a gray and go 0 0.6 again, like so. And I'm going to change the settings for the padding on the content here. From four, not from four two to not. Yeah. We're going to change the. We're then going to change the padding from four two to just a five, all around it, and the image itself is this white box at the moment in the middle. Okay. Now the image is also going to have some text above it, so the text is going to display how much we, uh, how many of those items we have in our inventory. So to do that, we need to do an overlay. So right click on your image and wrap with overlay. The overlay, you want to make sure it's filling holes first of all. The image, we want to fill across horizontally and vertically. So tick both those boxes up top on the right hand side and that'll fill it up the whole screen. We're then going to go and add a text field. And the text field, we're going to align to the bottom right. Now to do this, we're going to hide our image temporarily so we don't get a white block there. I'm going to put it to the right and at the bottom. And I'm going to change the text to something more appropriate so we can actually see what it's going to look like in game. Okay, I think I like that. We'll leave that as is. And make sure you show the image back up again. The image is going to be changing uh, the time so we need to change the name of it from image 66 here to item thumbnail and make sure it's variable is ticked the text is also going to change so we're going to change that there from quantity text there and tick is variable as well so anything you think you're going to change inside the game make sure they ticked as variable it compile and go to the graph now the graph is going to require a couple of details. Most notably, it's going to require the item that you want to put in there. So we're going to go and call this item. And the variable type for this is going to be an item parent. But this time, a class reference. The class reference holds all the details of those items. So we want that in there. We also want to make it editable. So tick the editable box and also expose on spawn. So when we draw these uh, slots to the screen, we can change this variable as we are adding them. Now we're going to use the pre-construct. And on the pre-construct, we're going to tell the item thumbnail and quantity text to change based on these item details here. So we need to, first of all, change the item theme thumbnail. Drag item thumbnail out, choose get. And then from there, we're going to set brush from texture. The texture is going to come from this item class. So drag the item class out, choose get, and from there, get class defaults. 
And here you have the name, description, category, and it's craftable and thumbnail. But you want the thumbnail to connect that up. Next is the quantity text. So this is not going to come from the item, but instead it's going to come from the inventory component on our player. So we need to somehow get that from the player to this slot. Now the way we're going to do that is we're going to add a new variable here called player character. And the variable type for this is going to be the type of uh, your player character. So in my case, it's the first person character. And that will be an object reference, so the blue one. And again, you want it editable and expose on spawn. And you want to drag that out as a reference. From there, we can get the inventory component. And then from there, we can get the inventory map. Now to find the quantity we want, we can grab from the map and do find. And you can see here it's requiring an item class. So we can use this item class we've got assigned here, plug that in, and that's now going to output the quantity inside our inventory. So now we've got that, we can assign it to our text. So we want to drag quantity text out, set text. And if I connect the two now, it should convert it to a text uh, type. So that's on the pre-construct. There we go. Click compile and we are done here. Next, we're going to the inventory category. The category, again, is not going to use the canvas panel, but instead it's going to be a simply a horizontal box, uh, sorry, a vertical box. And the vertical box is going to, is going to, going to, going to, and the vertical box is going to contain a text for the title of it, and it's also going to include a wrapper, a well, wrap box. Sorry, the wrap box is going to store its contents uh, in a sequence until it reaches the end, and then go to a new line. So on the text block here, we're going to make this uh, variable. So we're going to change the name of it up here to. Um, category title and tick is verbal and I'm also going to change the size of it from 24 to 32 and the wrap box is also going to be variable because we're changing what's in it so here we need to go category container and tick is verbal as well hit compile okay with that done we can go into the graph now the graph is going to have a new variable and it's going to hold what category this belongs to. So type in the word category and the variable type for this will be item categories. Enum. The enumerator comes from our first episode I think we done it in. So add that in as the item type and you want to make sure it's editable as an option. Next we need to link uh, the contents of this to this category. So we need to filter out all the items we've got, check what category they are, and then add it as a slot to our uh, inventory here. So I'm going to do this on the pre-construct. And on the pre-construct, we're going to get the player character and add it all to here. So for that, I'm actually going to create another variable for the player character reference. And the variable type for that is going to be my first person character. But rather than sticking the instance editable, we're going to get this the old fashioned way. So we're going to get the first person character, or get the player character, sorry, first of all. Just jump ahead of myself. And then cast that to our first person character. We're going to store that cast as our player character. So we've got a reference to it all the time. Okay, so after this, we're now going to filter through our inventory and put in the correct category items into this slot, into this uh, section. So what we need to do here is get our inventory component and then get the inventory from that component. We then want to go and get uh, the keys, or oh, sorry, just type in keys. And that gives us a list of all the variable uh, all the uh, varying types of items we have. So all these are item types. So with this array, we can now do a for each loop. 
going through each item and we're going to be checking their categories. So on your element, drag this out and get class defaults. And here we've got category. We want to compare that to this category. So drag it out and choose get and then compare them with an equals. This boolean can go into a branch, so let's add a branch. And then from there, if it's true, we're going to add this item as a slot. So if it's true, create slot, uh, create a widget, sorry. And from the drop down, choose your inventory slot UI. Again, here you can see it's asking for the item, which should be this thing here. And it's also asking for a player character, which is this reference here. Once we've got that slot, we're going to add it to our container. So we're going to drag out our category container out. And then we're going to add child to wrap box. And the content for this, it comes from this return value. And it's going to add it to the wrap box like so. Hit compile. And that's it. So it's only going to add the slots based on the same category as this current uh, container. What we will be doing and what we will be requiring is the ability to update this based on when we pick up items. So at the end of this, we need, oh, at the start of this rather, or this for each loop, we're going to do, actually, let's do from keys. From keys, actually, yeah, yeah, from keys. We'll go from keys and we'll make a custom event called update or refresh. We call it refresh. And on the refresh, we're going to drag the container out and clear all its children. So it comes empty. And then we're going to drag it down to the keys. So it does this all over again. Okay. Hit compile and we're done here. Now go to your crafting menu. In here, we're going to have a vertical box. And this vertical box is going to contain a inventory category for each category we have. So there's one, and we'll rename this one. Uh, we'll call this one uh, throwables. And on the right hand side, you can see the category is now an option from the drop down. So I'm going to tick throwables for this. And I'm going to Copy that with Control W. Rename this one to Ammo. This one to Medicinal. Equipment. And we're going to go into plants. Parts. And finally. Skins. So there's all our items in a uh, vertical box. So we need to need to change these headlines to match our uh, categories. Now the easiest way of doing that is actually on the category item itself. Let's go back to our inventory category, to the graph. And on the pre-construct, we're going to add the ability to build those uh, titles. So category title, we're going to drag that out and to get, and then from there, do set text. We're then going to drag our category out to get, and then from there, just search for the word string, and you'll see enum to string. We can then click that and drag that to our text value, like so. 
So now it's on the pre-construct, if I go back to the crafting menu, you'll see the headlines all change to match their categories. So the next thing we do is change the formatting of this category list. So rather than stretching across the whole thing, we don't want to do that because we want to give half the screen available to some text and instructions about the items themselves. And then I also want to make it scrollable so we can scroll down this list. So I'm going to right click and change my vertical box here with a replace with scroll box. Then on each of these items, I'm going to space these out a little bit by changing the padding. So let's change the padding on each of these to 50. And we're going to keep doing that for all of them. So nice and easily spaced apart, making them easy to read. Okay, so that's the scroll box, but I don't want it to cover the whole screen, as I said. So what I'm going to do is click on it and change it from horizontal line fill to just left. So that's not going to fill left, but it's not going to do the uh, whole width that I want it to do. It's going to be variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the um, So as you can see, it's it's uh, all over the left now, but it's only going to do the width of the actual contents. We want it to be a fixed width. So for this, I'm going to wrap this with a size box. And on a size box, I'm going to tick the minimum width and change that value to let's say one. Uh, let's do 800. Uh, let's do 1,000. Yeah, there we go. 1000. So now we've got this scroll box with 1000. I'm going to customize a few things if I like about the scroll bar itself. So I'm going to change the width of it, for example. Uh, so change the thickness of the scroll box from this one, I think it is. Let's do this as 20. Yeah, there you go. And 20. And leave that as is. Okay. So there's our scroll boxes for our inventory. So I can click compile and we can close that menu down. So if I push play now and hit tab, there's all my uh, components. If I interact with an item and then search for it, you'll see it hasn't updated. That's because although we made the refresh event, we haven't actually called it yet. So what we need to do is be able to call that event when we picked up an item. So what we do is going to go into our item parent. And when we add it to an inventory, we're going to tell it to get hold of the UI and tell it to use that refresh function. So from the here, we're going to get the player controller. And from there, we're going to cast to our particular controller. This all happens before destroy act, by the way. And then from as my player controller, I can get hold of my heads up display. And then I can get hold of my crafting menu. Now the refresh is on each of the categories. So what I need to be able to do is call the refresh in all of those um, individual categories. So on the crafting menu, so let's go back to that. I'm going to the graph and create a whole custom event in here called refresh inventory. And I'm going to take all of these and put them into an array. So drag ammo out, just get, and from here, go make array. And I'm going to, as I say, put all of them into an array. So I need seven. And in that array, we're going to go and do a for each loop. And tell it to refresh. Now 
we can now call this refresh inventory from our item parent by coming out of the craft menu UI and go refresh inventory. Hit compile once that's all connected up. And now if I test and play the game, I can interact with Bush and you can see now appears in my plant section. And there you have it. And that number will change at the bottom to match its quantity. So let's test that out. I can drag two out, drag a third one out, play, two, three. And there's our three in our plants folder. I can scroll down with the scroll wheel to see all my items. And there you have it. That'll do for this episode, so thanks very much for watching. In the next episode, we're actually going to make a start on actual crafting of these various items. So we're going through how to do the recipes and uh, actual crafting of them. So thanks very much for watching. If you want to watch that next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan where you can watch that episode plus many others. If you've liked what I do, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>